books matter. It's terrific. Hello, I got a Sun Tup Editions book, but I already got it out of the box. What's up with that? I feel like I just ripped somebody off, and I felt like that the moment I opened it up and got the book out. There's a book that I read relatively recently, in the last year or so, I don't exactly remember when I read it, but it's called The Butcher Boy by Patrick McCabe, called Butcher Boy by Patrick McCabe. This is a book that I would have never, ever, ever, never, ever would have read, except there's a, a good fellow by the name of Terry, Jeff Terry, and he really loves this book. I don't know. He, he read it sometime and loved the book and read it a bunch of times and talked, talks about the book an awful lot. <clears throat> and there's a publisher. There's a fellow named Jeff Terry. There's a publisher named Sun Tough Editions, and uh, they decided to publish this book and um, I'm a numbered rights holder with Sun Tup Editions. Before it came time to decide to buy the book or give up the number, I decided I wanted to read it and uh, figure it out for myself. Maybe get off the train, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, I read the book. I really loved it. I really hated it. I really liked it. I really loved it. All these different things happen in a matter of whatever it is, 300 pages or so. And... Uh, uh, it's uh, today, after having read that months ago, I loved the book at the end of the day. Completely loved it. I read the book. I loved it. I immediately bought the movie on Amazon Prime or whatever it is. I had to buy it to watch it. I loved the movie, and the movie made me... Uh, I think it it almost helped act to accentuate parts of the book for me because it's uh, um, the book, for me, as a read was a little bit tough. And uh, maybe uh, if you read it, you'll, you'll know why. If you've read it, you could probably understand why. Not only the, the language, it's written in English, but it's a, an, an Irish author, uses a lot of slang and, uh, and descriptive terms and expressions that I didn't know. And I'm not one to read a word and then go look it up and all that junk, so I'm powering through. And I kind of figure this stuff out as I go, and I did all right with it. But then the perspective also would change and uh, it would go from a uh, first person narrative, typical, uh, I did this and I did that to a stream of conscious narrative where you're in the moment explaining what's happening as it's happening to you and uh, telling your reactions, your thoughts, your exclamations, oh God, you know, whatever, as it's happening. And it would kind of go back and forth like that. And again, that, ex that transition maybe makes it tough sometimes to keep up. But then, but that wasn't really it either. Part of it uh, is that you're getting stuff from a kid's perspective. And this kid's perspective is distorted. And he's using imagination He's using emotion. He's using a lot of different things to tell you what's happening. And so I would find myself wondering, is this literally really happening? Or is he just making stuff up? And then later I would realize, okay, this was really happening here. But then this part, he was just making stuff up. So some of that, um, I went, I think I started reading the book. And at one point I was saying, this is the greatest book I've ever read. And then almost within a page or two, I was saying, this, I don't like this book. And then I'd start figuring it out. And I'd really start liking the book again. And then I'd start to get a little bit confused. Is this really happening or is this not really happening? And then, I, again, I'd catch up. I'd figure it out. And then it just went to the end. It, it started to develop into an end that I could really get my wrap my hands around. And and I, I love the book. I told you that already. So uh, a brief review. I'll just talk a little bit about it. There's a kid named Francie Brady living in a small town whose name I can't recall off the top of my head in Ireland. Poor kid. His dad is a alcoholic. His mom suffers from uh, mental illness, depression, and things like that. And then Francie is this kid who has a vivid imagination. He's, uh, he's got a good friend named Joe and as long as things are going right with his friend Joe, I think he's, he feels like it's all cool, man. It's all cool in the gang, but he doesn't realize that the behaviors and the things that are doing are bad. Um, and 
I think this is the kind of book where a lot of people are going to have a lot of different opinions on what makes Francie Brady the way he is. But I read this book and I read that character and I kind of feel like he's not really a product of his environment. I don't, I don't think that. I think that this is a kid that if he was born in a high castle with lots of money, a rich kid with doting, loving parents who gave him all the nourishment and attention he needed, he'd still be the kid that would go out and get in trouble, that would steal something from somebody else, that would hurt somebody else if he would find slights in the way that they would look at him or the words they would say. I think that's the kind of kid he is. But at the same time, he's an entertaining character. I almost, I feel for him in a way it makes me want to cry, makes me want to hug the poor kid, even though I know I would, I don't think it would help. Because this is a kid that no matter how bad things are, he's going to find a laugh in it. He's going to find a way to cope with it, the joke, to to say, oh, it's okay, you know, and come up with some some silver lining in every bad thing. And no matter how deep he gets, he's going to find something in it that's going to keep him going on. It, nothing seems to really bash this kid into the ground. And his life feels like it might be something that would bash a kid into the ground, grind him up into meat, and they would lie down and die and give up. But his mother has mental uh, mental health problems, and his dad's alcoholism seems to feed into that. Francie's misbehavior and troubles that he gets to, into seems to feed that. Uh, things that happen send the mother over the edge, have her doing awful things, not to other people, but to herself. And uh, uh, in, in one point earlier in the book, they send her off to, uh, to a mental institution of some sort for treatment. And Francis and his buddy Joe are talking about it. And they said, well, it's kind of like she's going to the garage to get a tune-up. Like, they're going to go fix her gears and all that. So Francie's telling everybody, Mom was just going to the garage. Ma. Mom's just going to the garage, you know, get a tune up, get her gears worked on, stuff like that. And that's the way he's finding fun and laughs and, ah, it's just a big joke, man. Mom's going to the garage to get her gears tuned up and she's coming back soon. Good as new. Uh, also, Uncle Allo, Allo, A-L-O, something, I don't know, Allo. He's the success in the family. He's the one that everybody says, oh, he's great. He's got all these men working for him in the big city. I forgot the big city. Was it Dublin or London? I forgot been a few months anyway he's in the big city he got all these men working for him great success he's coming home to visit family and they're planning this big party ma gets back from the garage getting her gears tuned up and she's making all these baked goods for Allo, uncle Allo's party <clears throat> and everybody in town's talking about it all excited but uh uh da 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 dad i guess they call him da um, Francie's dad, he, his brother's the big success. He's not. Seems like he's really down. He's already alcoholic and he gets really boozed up and blows the party for everybody. Talking about how his brother's a fraud. Aloe's, you know, just tearing it all apart. Ruins the party for everybody. Um, Ma has her, uh, mental problems, mental health problems. And you can see that this might make things worse. Francie's got his own issues. And uh, he takes off for, for Dublin. And I'll, I think I'll leave it at that. But um, the story goes way on from there. And uh, it's not... <clears throat> I won't tell you anything else. Anyway, I loved this story. Not easy to read. Because just wasn't... I, I had trouble keeping a good understanding and a grasp of what was really happening compared to what was imaginary and what was whatever. Uh, I had trouble with it as it went, but it's a book that when I was done reading it, I wanted to just go back to the beginning and read it again. It left me feeling like that. I'd taken a real, real roller coaster ride for me, and that's fun. Uh, but I, I found, I found, I don't know, I loved Francie Brady. I didn't love the things he did, and I, I more like I feel bad for this kid, and I appreciate the kid at the same time. You want to hug this kid. You want to go have a good time, take the kid to cool places and do all kinds of cool things. But somewhere in the back of my head, I know that he's going to be doing bad things along the way. <clears throat> anyway, that being said, I got the book. I didn't order. I, I ordered the numbered edition. Pre-ordered. I got my number. I'm still on the train, even today. I didn't buy the artist edition. 
And then uh, I started seeing it out and I really regretted it. And there's still some available at, uh, at Sun Tup Editions on their website. Maybe 50 artist editions, I don't know. There's some artist editions that are still available. The numbered and lettered are sold out. So you want one, go on to uh, mash them buttons, go get you one. Um, but I, uh, I, I started seeing the, the artist edition and kind of wishing I'd have got one. And then somebody, somebody on the Sun Tup Collectors Facebook group posted one at a very, very, very good price. And I said, I want one already. And I, at that price, there's no hesitation. And I bought it. I got it in the mail and I said, well, it's been a few weeks since this book came out. Nobody's going to care to want to see an unboxing of it. There's already an unboxing video. Go see that video. I opened it up and took it out and immediately I said, holy cow, I feel like I just cheated Butcher Boy, a very great book. But then when I got it in hand, it looks so doggone good. And there it is sitting in the, in the slip case like it sits on my shelf with my Sun Tup Edition books. And it looks like uh, nothing I've ever seen before. Sun Tup Editions is very good with their artist editions at really mixing it up. You get a good variation, but some of them jump off the screen as being very different than the others. And this is one of them. I haven't wrapped the dust jacket yet in Mylar, which I will. But there's our spine. There's the, the uh, slip case, the texture. You can kind of see that texture there. Almost like pigskin, you can kind of see how that texture might might be compared where they got it from. There's the spine of the slip case for those of you who put them on the shelf the wrong way. Just slid that in there. Anyway, uh, the artwork, so stinking good. The David Lupton artwork on the dust jacket and the interior illustrations looks very good. And there's what, a, there's what the book looks like. Man, it looks good. So Butcher Boy, that's our character, Francie Brady. He's called, uh, he's called a piggy, pig boy, he's referred to as a pig. And he adopts that as his sarcastic self-moniker. Ah, look at the pig, you know. Uh, he, he's got, uh, he's made enemy. And um, partially deservingly, but the way his enemy has treated him, this uh, um, Mrs. Nugent, the, the mother of Philip Nugent, one of his classmates, or one of his friends, kids in the neighborhood. Francie did a bad thing and he deserved to be treated badly for it, punished, what have you. But when you start constantly insulting a child over and over, using their stature in life as a way of insulting them, not he's a bad kid, he's a thief, he steals, he does all this, but you insult his stature in life based on his ma and his pa, his mom and dad and whatever, da, you're wrong. And uh, this Mrs. Nugent is wrong. Francie's not right, though. Her being wrong doesn't make him right. One side being wrong doesn't make the other side right. Anyway, the, so the pictures often refer, have him looking like a pig because that's what he's referred to, and that's how he refers to himself. Um, let me take this slipcase, this dust jacket off, and show you what looks really cool is our boards. That, that's a cloth bound board, but you can see that picture of a pig strung up by his ankle. There's the spine. My light's terrible, I'm sorry. I truly apologize. I need to fix the switch and I just don't have an extra switch. And I don't feel like going to town right now, so I'll fix it tomorrow. Why do today what you can put off for tomorrow? That's what I always say. There's our end papers, illustrated end papers. So by some publisher's definitions, I've already put up an illustrated book, but not Sun Tup's. Sun Tup's gonna give me more, gonna give me more. This one has a, a, a new introduction, specifically written by Patrick McCabe, exclusively for Sun Tup editions and more of our David Lupton interior illustrations artwork installed uh for those of you who often will write to me and you'll ask about uh, font margins some of that kind of stuff that's what you see so don't no don't say i never never gave you anything there's a little bit of that there uh, let me flip through grab some of these interior 
illustrations from David Lupton, and then we'll go on to the house. We're already at the house. I am. We'll move on, and uh, there's Francie and Da, the dad, I reckon. We'll move on and do other things. Uh, yeah, I talked about imagination. Francie has a phenomenal imagination, and some of these, some of these things I would... Anyway, I would have trouble from time to time when you go from real to imaginary to real and uh, picking up along the way. Uh, showing you the last few interior illustrations. If you haven't read this book, I strongly suggest it. I'm not saying that you'll love it, but I sure did. I never ever would have read it if it wasn't for recommendation. I read it and I loved it and I feel, uh, I feel better for having read it. Uh, some of these pictures may contain spoilers. If you're worried about reading, seeing a picture that may give a spoiler, cover your eyes, darling. If you don't know the story, you probably wouldn't know it's a spoiler. Here we go. Uh, there's more of our David Lupton artwork. And I think that's the last interior illustration in the book. Just a little bit more. If you're looking at pages, that's what you're going to be reading. Looks good. If I was reading uh, reading this book, it looks good. The font is not too small. The margins are not too big. And uh, the story is just too sweet. What else is there? Done, gone, and done it. Forgot to show you the signature page. Signed by artist David Lupton. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, the rear end pages. So that's that's Butcher Boy by Patrick McCabe. Uh, it's the only book of his I've read. And uh, I'm glad Suntup Editions did this book. I'm glad I was able to get a number, which hasn't been printed and shipped and all that stuff yet. I can't wait to get that one in the house. Glad I was able to get a uh, an artist edition. And for myself, selfishly, I'm glad I was able to get a really sweet price. Now, one of the things people talked about, the book is a little loose in the slipcase, barely. For me, I would say there's a, I've got it pushed all the way to the side so you can see the slight, slightest of gap. I'm going to put this in a Mylar dust jacket. In fact, it's not even really a gap. It's more the colors on the, on the cover that makes it look that way. So I'll pull it out a little bit and you can see it's not, it's not a gap really in the book. Part of it is this, when you slide it all the way in, this dark edge here makes it look like there's a gap and then, and it's not tight, but there's not a huge gap. So when I put it in all the way, you're going to see that in there, making it look like there's a gap. But really, you're seeing this along with a little darkness in there, making it look that way. So that's mine. I can't speak for yours, but I love this book. I'm really glad I got it. Put it on the shelf. Call it a day. Thank you for your time. I hope you liked the video. Hope it wasn't too long. If it is, I'm sorry. At least you got the option to skip. Fast forward to the part where I'm holding up a book. Anyway, got no more lies to tell. So until next time, say la vie. Baby.